This conference will now be recorded. So the agenda of this webinar is first I would like I will give the introduction to the system level modeling, how the architecture exploration is done using the system level modeling. Then it also explains how the hardware software partitioning can be done efficiently, how to analyze the metrics of the partitioning, how, how the code design works, the how to optimize the power consumption uh, in the partitioning process. And also we will evaluate the software at the end. So I would like to give a quick intro to the Mirabilis design. So before we get started, um, our company has been around for 15 years and we have got development and support center in multiple locations around the world. We also have 60 customers in a variety of applications. You can see a number of products displayed here that are being developed using Visual Sim. The product is Visual Sim, which is a modeling and simulation software. It comes with a complete package of modeling IP, analysis tools, simulators, and post-processing environment that allow you to do your architecture exploration. About Visual Sim. So it is a modeling and simulation software that allows you to do the architecture exploration. It has three parts like the hardware, software and the network. And the analysis we can perform in Visual Sim are performance analysis, power exploration, functional analysis, failure analysis, etc. And the performance analysis is about the timing analysis like the latency, throughput, and the power exploration is the instant and average power for the uh, each IP or through the entire model. The whole goal of the system is to able to construct a model in a graphical environment using uh, the predefined libraries of Visual Sim. We also run the Monte Carlo simulation with variety of traffic use cases, parameters, and then we'll be able to analyze the results. So this is uh, the extensive library of Visual Sim, which makes it easier to integrate it into the model. We just need to drag and drop and uh, construct our model, which may, will be very much easier. So some basic definitions. First, architecture exploration. We can perform the architectural analysis of algorithms, software, in order to specify the, in order to optimize the specifications, such as the speed, process speed, or system speed, its arbitrations, topology, and uh, to meet the certain requirements. The requirements may be the its timing, the cost of communication, the efficiency of the system etc and hardware software co-design here uh, first what is hardware software co-design is in co-design the hardware and software are developed at the same time on like parallel um, so it uh, helps us to improve the design quality the design cycle time and uh, cost and also it reduces the integration and test time because while developing itself both are um, done parallelly every testing verification everything is done parallelly which makes it easier the performance analysis is done using the metrics like the buffer size bandwidth utilization the throughput and response time of the application also the power measurement. It is very important for any system to have the power budget. We the power consumption should not uh, exceed. So here we also in, include the power measurement. 
hardware software partitioning first let's see what is hardware software partitioning so it is the process of dividing deciding what are the computations to be implemented in hardware and what are the ones to be implemented in software usually the application specific hardware is much faster than software but it is also significantly more expensive and software on the other hand is cheaper to create and to maintain but it is very slow hence performance critical problems of the system should be realized in hardware and non critical components should be realized in software this way a good trade off between cost and performance can be achieved so in the here you can see the behavioral description and the hardware architecture in the behavioral description the structure uh, describes the system as a collection of concurrent tasks that can be implemented in hardware or software by changing the task structure like the equivalent structure which is functionally equivalent so that we get a new and improved ways to partition the system so that involves the task graph how the dependency is executed and the hardware architecture gives the entities to which different task in the behavioral description may be assigned so if a task if a satisfactory satisfactory partition is not found then we can change the hardware architecture by removing the bottlenecks that cause the performance problems and the hardware platforms may be the processors fpgas computers gpu tpu etc so matrix so in order to achieve a partition that will give us the required performance within the overall requirements we need certain metrics like the timing deadline the throughput the power consumption the utilization of the resources buffer occupancy of the resources everything is needed so to validate the efficiency of the algorithms performance metrics are calculated and analyzed concurrent software execution makes system sizing challenging so here you can see many tasks 1 2 3 and we have many resources cpu 1 in io device cpu 2 dsp devices so uh, here comes the task graph and scheduling when scheduling the uh, when scheduling the tasks to different systems it is very much uh, yeah necessary to see the data dependency uh, like the task may be dependent and the limitation of the resources should be considered how the scheduling is performed everything should be considered and the, it makes the system sizing to be very challenging so uh, some tasks need to be executed in hardware and some need to be in executed in software so that the power consumption is also in control and the um, a sequence is also correct so it is important software task scheduling as we saw the main uh, metric for hardware software partitioning is the timing deadline so uh, in for example in real time applications in the uh, soft the applications meeting the deadline is very much important otherwise it leads to disasters also for example in air control the date meeting the deadlines is very much important so for example in a in a task graph 
the higher priority task also available and the low priority task is all, are also available so um, when with the priority the higher priority higher priority task will be assigned to schedule uh, i mean the resources and the lower priority will be uh, waiting for the access to schedulers so um, in that case the low priority task may lose its deadline so that may lead to the delay in the execution of other tasks also so it is very much important to ensure whether we are meeting the deadline of the applications challenges in partition the first challenge faced by the software architects is ensuring whether the sequence of tasks performed is correct according to their code so this is very much important because the series of architecture decisions and trade offs impact the quality its performance the maintainability and it impacts the overall success of the system so if we fail to consider those problems uh, it may lead to long term consequences that may put your system at risk and the next challenge is to verify whether the task is executed within the deadline in real time systems task may have deadlines so if some task underestimates the hardware requirements like processor processor requirement then it is going to use more cpu time which results in missing its deadline then it affects the deadline of other tasks also the third challenge is analyzing the functionality and timing on different hardware platforms so today the software relies on the proper behavior of components and framework i mean like hardware that is designed and built by someone so evaluating the time the task takes in different hardware platforms is the challenge and also how the hardware is going to impact your system or we can say as the software task drops and what will happen to a design if the framework misbehaves or when there is failure in the hardware so that your requested data is not coming within the time then these are the challenges the software architects face majorly and also the there are some we face with the uh, processors the memories the input io uh, io devices like we have to decide uh, whether for performing a task how many processors we need or if we give um, many tasks to a single processor is that over demanding or how can we um, distribute our work so that the speed can be increased how many processes are needed to increase the i mean to maintain the load so like this these are the challenges faced by the software architects which makes them uh, difficult to design the hardware software partitioning so these are the applications in the like um, the avionics artificial intelligence network processing or some of the contacts of uh, hardware software partitioning we will see how the hardware software partitioning happens in the contacts of large data systems in task graphs in a system on chip in the later sessions first let's see uh, real time operating system scheduling so here you can see um now let's look into the model so here you can see an accelerator and a dsp so here we have like the hardware and software and also we have many uh, tasks that are going to be executed parallelly on those resources so here uh, it is a simple model to explain how the hardware software partitioning is going to take place 
So um, here that we are getting the traffic generated, I mean the tasks are getting generated. So we need to assign it to accelerators or to DSP. So now uh, if you assign on all the tasks, all the tasks to either the hardware or either to software, you can see how the power consumption varies, how the delay varies, everything here in this model. So now I'm assigning the two tasks to accelerators. So two tasks are going to the hardware and one to the DSP. Now let's see how it goes. So here you can see in the hardware, we have the task one and task two being executed. And in the software, only one task, task three is being executed. So let's see how the power consumption differs. So till four seconds, the power, when the task is getting increased, the power consumption is also getting increased. At four seconds, three tasks are being executed parallelly. So the power consumption uh, reaches high. So similarly, you can use your um, scheduling algorithms and then map it to the hardware or so hardware and software and see how the tasks are being executed, how it meet, meeting its deadline and uh, how the power consumption varies using this model. And uh, this is just an example. So application of task graph. So what um, we know task graph has sequence of tasks that need to be executed when the previous one finishes or the dependency task will be executed. So now here you can see when the task A finishes, the task B will start. When B finishes, the C will start. And here also, uh, here we are going to see how the uh, it can be implemented in hardware and software. So uh, this is one simple model for uh, the task graph. Here when A1 finishes, the A, it will, its output is sent to A2, then when A2 also getting executed, then A3, like that uh, sequence of tasks, A1, A2, A3. And here you can see the dependency. When B, when A1 and A2 finishes, B1 is getting started. Likewise here, when A2 and A3 finishes, B2 is getting started. So it is very much easier to design the task graph in Visual Sim. So using this, you can also uh, see where the bottleneck comes, where the soft, when the software is taking long time. Then um, you can also check the failure analysis. If some resource is getting failed, what happens to the task? How it is going to affect the deadline of other tasks also? So it is easy to analyze. Five G model based bank. So in this system, So here you can see the sequence of tasks to be executed. Like when the first math physics, in, when this interface finishes its task, it triggers the next one. Then that uh, triggers the next one like that. So um, 
here also comes the dependency when the this task finishes next one starts so uh, in the 5g model normally we have uh, the power consumption will be very much high in the 5g system so we when the number of users are increasing we need to assign the users uh, at different um, resources like the dsp or accelerator so when we are assigning we need to consider whether the power budget is uh, exceeding or uh, how the throughput is um, how the throughput is maintaining that is a very very important thing to consider so here whenever a task comes it is assigned to a dsp or accelerator So the throughput is in terms of the users per second um, and uh, how the power concept. So the, uh, with the 5G system, the power consumption will be increasing when the throughput is also increasing. So uh, our aim is to maintain the throughput within a power budget. So the scheduling becomes a very important process here so that um, any software is not getting overloaded or um, even if the failure occurs the scheduling process will take care so that the power is not exceeding the limit The next model we can see is the large radar system. So here also you can see multiple tasks that need to be executed in different, uh, different resources. So in this model, we have the uh, a dispatcher, you like a uh, a database can be created in which the sequence of tasks can be mentioned so that according to the sequence the scheduling process will take place and each task will be assigned by either the software or hardware So we can see the throughput plotter and the resource and the statistics here. So you can see in the statistics plot, you can only see how the, what is the number of packets entered, how much exited and how much getting rejected. Also, we can see the buffer occupancy, its maximum occupancy, minimum occupancy, then its utilization, everything can be analyzed. Here we can see the time data plotter. It shows when the task is being executed according to the simulation time and task. And the next important model we can see here is the hardware software partitioning in system on chip. So the, it is the architecture of system on chip for multimedia applications in mobile systems. Here the partitioning is done using the rotation algorithm. So here there is a parameter called select scenario. I mean, select partitioning. So using this, you can select either 
the task should be executed in software or in the hardware. So this is the sequence of tasks that needs to be executed. And we have here we have the software and here we have the hardware part. So when you change this parameter to software or hardware, you can uh, choose either in which part the task should take place. So using this, the designers can choose uh, which partitioning, like uh, selecting the computation to be done in hardware or software. So now uh, I have chosen the partitioning as software. So when the task is getting generated, the every task will be assigned to the software, software resources. So now let's see how the power consumption is. Here you can see the throughput of the task. Here the statistics are getting generated. Here you can also see which, uh, how much the power usage is, how much the power percent is used. Everything can be seen here. So it gives a detailed analysis of statistics. What is the number entered occupancy? It will be very much useful for analyzing. Similarly, now when you change it to hardware, we can see the difference in the power consumption. So here you can see the bus delay. It will generate the statistics of every hardware archive, hardware blocks present. So the processes, task delay, the cache block, the DRAM block, and it will generate the utilization. Everything will be generated. The occupancy, the number entered, Everything can be seen in the statistics generated. And now here you can see the throughput of the task. It is a throughput of the sequence of tasks assigned. And now you can see the power consumption in the hardware part. And also the power usage is also increased to five. So using this model, it will be very much easy to analyze how the hardware behaves when a certain sequence of tasks are assigned to the resources, how the, depending on the hardware, how the task behaves, how much throughput it is going to produce, uh, what is the response time of the system, delay, like the delay, uh, the latency of the system, how the power consumption varies, 
like uh, if we use the software part what is the power usage what is the power per percentage of power consumed everything can be analyzed here you can see the throughput the power of the device power of the software hardware everything can be seen it also gives you a detailed analysis of statistics which helps you in analyzing and uh, building your model so integration of software modeling so we have like uh, we have integrated the gem file also to our tool so we can run the os and software on gem file or the piece of board on gem file and reset it in visual sense so that we cover the end to end system fully when we want to use the model implemented in other um, in gem file or iss we trigger the wrapper developed and integrated in the visual sim so that will kick the simulation after the gem file finishes its execution the data obtained from gem file is used in the later stages that is implemented in visual sim so we are coming to the end of the session if you have any questions you can ask now Hello. Hello. Uh, thank you very much for your nice presentation. Thank you. Thank you. I am Murtaza from Uppsala in Sweden. Okay. Uh, I have some questions about uh, the tool. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you pro the the tool provides some uh, metrics about power consumption and timing analysis and also functional behavior of an application mm -hmm. right. uh, usually all these parameters depend on the input of the system yes uh, how do you which input do you use for for measuring this metrics do you generate random inputs or you you have a certain method like so if you see here um, we have a thing called data structure